my classification system is called bow classification based on side profile. So basically, my classification system uses the side profile of the bow. When people usually associate with historical bows, typically people use culture instead of the shape of the bows. And I don't particularly like this classification because the problem is a lot of bows have different designs in history, uh, even by the same culture. For example, a Mongolian archer during the 13th century would have used bows that are slightly different from the bows that they use later on during the 18th century. Uh, so these kind of designs which would have changed even from the culture. So instead of doing that kind of classification, I decided to classify my bows based on the shape of the bow. Some people might think of their cross section as well and also the top view. But typically when you think of a bow shape, you th this is the typical view you would think of. So I, I picked this view, the side view here for my classification. And now when it comes to a bow, there's actually three stages, even in its side profile. Which one would I pick? Well, for my classification system, it uses the unstrung and the strong shapes. Um, for most of the naming, it would be using the unstrung shape except when it comes to string contacts. Basically it comes down to this. You start from the handle, you describe its shape. There's only three possibilities, reflex, straight, or deflex. You don't use the words recurve in this. So I start in this handle, for example, this is reflex. Then the limbs here, because it's a perfectly straight fiberglass bar, it's straight. So reflex, straight, and then reflex. In terms of static, nothing is perfectly 100% static, especially in the molecular level. If you look at things, it's never going to be perfectly static, but as long as it's static enough or the intention of the design is static, then I consider it static for my classification. So to call this bow, it is a reflex, straight reflex, static bow. Now, the weakness of this convention is that if the top limb is a different shape than the bottom limb, then this then it would be hard to describe in words. That being said, there are very few examples of historical bows where the top limb has a different shape than the bottom limb. These are so few that we can always just have exceptions for these. And I think this is still better than trying to describe from one tip to the other tip because you're using a lot more extra words. Considering that most of the bows are not symmetric, not exactly symmetric, but most of the bows where the top and the bottom limb share the same uh, reflex or deflex properties. Therefore, I think it's better to start from the handle and then spread from either direction. So let's get into the classification diagram that I provided. These are basically all the historical bows that I can think of. There's going to be some that I forgot. The very first one is a straight. It's just straight. I have something that's not perfectly straight, but you get the idea. An English U Lombo. That's so long. This is an English U Lombo I'm working on. And when it comes to these stick bows, they're usually deflex bows or reflex, but they're never perfectly straight because, you know, organic materials or organic materials are not perfectly straight. Now I have the asymmetric reflex here. This is not a Japanese Yumi, by the way. They're a lot more complicated than just this. But I just wanted you to get an idea how I would add the word asymmetric in here. It would just even be in the beginning. If it's asymmetric, it's, a, it's you just add the word asymmetric. Almost all the um, Asiatic cell bows are slightly asymmetric to, to accommodate a higher knocking point. So when it comes to the shape of deflex, reflex, and straight, Basically, um, reflex is more efficient, but more stress on the material. Deflex is less stress on the material, less efficient, but it's easier to string. But the reflex is harder to string. And then straight is just in between. Now, the next thing I want to talk is the straight deflex design. If, you know, I've seen some of them in Africa um, of this design, perhaps the wood choice there is very limited or the tools are limited so they're stuck with the straight deflex design or it's be perhaps because of culture. Um, and then you have the deflex reflex and that's one of the one. this one's sometimes going to call it reflex deflex. It depends on your convention. I call this a deflex reflex because I start with the handle and the advantage of these bows is over time, a lot of the stick bows are going to develop a set near the handle, especially after you shoot it a few times. 
Um, so then the, naturally these will become deflex at the handle. So you can always try, try to bring it back up with a reflex here so that you kind of reduce that set. Um, then you got the reflex deflex, which is a wingle design. I've seen these in Native American style bows. But then you have reflex deflex reflex. With a reflex deflex reflex, sometimes they have a string contact. It just depends um, on when it's strong. Now you got the straight reflex. Typically these are strong with string contact. And to put it simply, modern Olympic bows are in this category, except the riser is a fancy shape. And then you have the deflex reflex with string contact. A lot of the Egyptian style and Assyrian style bows are like this, but they have some string contact depending on the bow. Um, and then you also have the asymmetric reflex deflex reflex with string contact. Um, that would be more of a Scythian style bow. On the right side of my line is the static tip family. All of these are have static tips and let's go into them. The first one is a reflex with static tips. This is a Yurtsi bow. Basically, I made a video on it. It's a Syrian style bow, possibly used by Roman auxiliary, auxiliary archers. And it's just a reflex bow, but with static tips. Um, because the tips are reinforced with a bone, and bone bends very little, so you get a static tip design. Um, and it's actually the first composite bow with static tips. But for static tips, the oldest exa example of static tips that I can find is the Mola Gabbit bow. I, th I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's basically a straight bow with static tips or deflex when you know when you have some set. It'd be deflex straight with static tips. This is the these are basically the oldest static tip bows uh, with archaeological evidence. Now we have the classic, the most common horse bow, the reflex straight with static tips. Whenever you look at a Hungarian bow, a Sasanian bow, Magyar or um, Han dynasty bows, Tang dynasty bows, a lot of these, they're basically reflex straight bows, reflex and then straight tips. Except, you know, this is, these are modern fiberglass bows, so the fiberglass bar is perfectly straight, but the organic ones, they're reflex and then just at the tips, it's straight, but with an angle. So now you know what to call these things. Instead of calling it a horse bow or an Asiatic bow, you can call it a reflex straight with static tips, or some people call it reflex bow with static tips. Um, and then you have asymmetric ones where, you know, the Huns from the Byzantine sources, they've described these kind of bows. Uh, they're asymmetric, reflex straight with static tips. Same thing, just asymmetric to accommodate a higher knocking point. And then you got reflex straight with static tips with string contact. That's basically your Manchu bows, your Qinghai bows. But some people just call it a reflex recurve with static tips. But I, I avoid the word recurve in here because that's a modern terminology that I just don't like to be involved with. And then you have the reflex, deflex, reflex with static tips with string contact. This is the only one I found an example is the synth. Indian bow. It's an Indian bow design and it looks basically like this. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. It's very complicated. And then you have the reflex reflex with static tip with string contact. That's your Mughal crab bows. Some of the Tur uh, Persian or Tur Turkic bows look like this. But yeah, this is your classic Mughal style bow. Um, and then you also have straight reflex with handle straight, straight reflex with static tip bows. Both of these are common seen, commonly seen in Turkic cultures, Persian cultures, uh, especially during the medieval period and then later on. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, there are plenty of other examples that I did not include, such as the Japanese Yumi. Uh, they, they're quite complicated as well. I believe they're asymmetric reflex, straight reflex, but it depends on the specific Yumi we're talking about. Um, so I didn't put it in here because the, it is, yeah, it is possible to have a, a Yumi in here. Um, but I didn't put it. And then there's plenty of other designs. There are examples where the top limb is a completely different shape as the bottom limb. These are so rare that I'm not too worried about it. So yeah, besides these ones, I think I got most of the historical bows. Let me know if I'm missing some or if, or if I've made mistakes. Uh, you know, I'm a person. I probably made plenty of mistakes here. It depends. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jack from Historical Archery.